come back here and they put a tool down through a hole that's right back here all the way down into the suspension and they just, the driver will go out and drive around the track a couple times, they'll come back and they'll tweak that suspension to get that suspension just right. You can't really see the car move up and down or anything, very, very subtle change in suspension. If it's not very, very close to being exactly right, he can't go around the corners competitively. Our suspension isn't just to make it feel nice, it's to make it hold the road in the corners. If it's not right, the car can't go around the corner. Let me show you something. I'm going to put this back to normal. Okay. And so let's say you have a car and you want to go for a drive. Okay. And the only person in the car is one skinny guy. Okay. So the suspension's going to sit in one way, right? Now, what if that guy, he gets out, a really fat guy gets in and gets a couple of fat buddies in the back and they're going to go on a vacation, so they load up the trunk with a whole bunch of luggage. Now what happens to the car? It goes down, okay? So those suspension angles are all different. That's going to happen on any car. To demonstrate what this car does, I bring my own weight with me, okay? So if I put a load in the trunk, simulating a load in the trunk, the back goes down, but it comes right back up again, so the suspension is exactly perfect the way it was. So it has a pump. It has a pump. Okay. It has a 2,000 PSI hydraulic pump, just like the Space Shuttle. Okay? If I reduce the load, of course the car is going to pop up like any car would. But give it just a second. It purposely not reacts real fast because it doesn't want to overreact to bumps. It doesn't want to fight you every time you go over a bump. You can get a piece of chalk and put it on my tire. And you'll see it's exactly back where it was, no matter how the car is loaded. Okay? Now, so we've got this central hydraulic system on board. The other thing we use it for is the brakes. Okay? Some Citroëns don't even have a brake pedal. They use a spool valve just like an airplane. Okay? Think about an airplane. The brakes aren't just real close together. They're all the way back in the back of the plane. You've got to run your high-pressure hydraulic to get them to work. And that's exactly how the brakes in this car are. You come around to the other side of the vehicle. Go around to you. If I have this pressure hydraulic system, I can also use it for power steering. Okay? This car has power steering. You say, well, that's no big deal. A lot of cars have power steering. Change your thinking. You're wrong. Okay? Some of the newer cars, the Mercedes and BMWs and things like that, do have true power steering. Most cars, most of the cars here, you say they have power steering, they have power assisted steering. Well, they actually power steer themselves under their own power. They'll assist you, but they won't steer under their own power. Okay, so that's power assisted compared to power steering. Okay, this car, if I turn the wheels over, it drives the wheels back to center. Somebody at a car show I was doing this and they actually had to work the other way. Yeah, it works the other way. I have to do it both ways ever since then. Okay, to show that the car self-centers the wheels. Again, why would I want to do that? Is that just so that some old guy can buy one and then come out to car shows and show off? Well, yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool, so I'm showing it off, okay? I also like to educate everybody on a little thing about thinking about our cars that we don't normally think about. You ever take your car, brand new car, okay, one of the nicest car out here, whatever car you pick, get a nice newly paved parking lot and drive around a tight turn, what happens? What's wrong? My wheels aren't falling, they're skidding at slow speed in a parking lot in a brand new car. That brand new car is broken, it's designed wrong. Okay. The reason is, uh, the reason is the car has to do that to have something called caster. But this car has no caster. The car is set to zero, and it won't do that in a parking lot. Okay. And instead, they use the hydraulic system to center my wheel for me, and that centering is speed sensitive. The faster I'm going, the less centering force I have, because otherwise it would make. I'm sorry. The more centering force I have because otherwise the car would be incredibly twitchy. Okay? Another cool thing about it is um, I can use that for something else. People look at this car and they say, oh, you got fender skirts. That makes it hard to change a tire. Show me a car that's easier to change the tire.
so you know what I'm going to do, right? Set it back down like that. or any faster either and it's not getting any younger any faster. Okay, but that wheel's already off the ground. Yeah. Okay? Very easy to change it. I can take this fender skirt off, all I need is a quarter to use as a screwdriver. Wow. Okay, there's no car. There you go, it's actually coming up. How many cars out here have retractable landing gear? No. <laughs> That's really cool. That's a good car. There must not have been enough of these on the road because we don't know about them. We don't, you don't know about them in the United States. Um, Citroën last sold cars in the United States in 1973 model year. Okay, they sold the um, the Citroën SM, which was a very expensive luxury sports car, um, which does have well, all these features you see here. One of the nice things about this car is it has some more modern things like fuel injection and things like that. Um, this is a 1987, so it was never sold in the United States. Um, Peugeot pulled out in, I think, 83. Today, Peugeot and Citroën are the same company. Kind of like Volkswagen and Audi are the same company. Um, Volkswagen having a Peugeot and Citroën are the same company. They were never legally imported here. This is a kind of gray market car, although it was legitimately imported and modified for the U.S. market. Some of those modifications have been undone and taken back to the European way. For example, you'll notice that I have the European headlights. In the 80s, we still had those European laws um, in the United States. It was way behind the Europeans. Um, we don't have those laws anymore, so it's perfectly legal to put them back again. Um, it still has its charcoal canister. Uh, it was required to be installed, and it has a beam back as if the whole pent up the car was imported right about the time of the so there's nothing wrong with the car. Like you said, it's one of the safest cars in the world that there's ever been. And, uh, but they still made them put that back there because they said all cars had to be This is a 2.5 liter straight. Uh, this is 